Yeah, uh, we're going to bring in Garrett Temple. Garrett, we're, we're, we're discussing your newest teammate, uh, Malik Williams. And Blake had a, a really good rundown of sort of just his last, like, year to date. Um, I'm curious in terms of just when did Malik join the team and how much preparation did he have before going up against Minnesota last night? Um, What's going on, guys? Good morning. <laughs> <laughs> also, good morning as well. Thank you for joining us, as always. <laughs> He he joined he joined the team yesterday, um, and so we had we didn't have a shoot around because it's a back to back. So we had a a, uh, a team like meeting in the morning, well around twelve o'clock in Minnesota, and uh, I think he went to the gym before that just to uh, with the guys that weren't going to play, uh, just to kind of walk through plays and get to know a couple of the. Uh, things that we do on offense and defense, and then went through shoot around. And, and coach said, I mean, went through our team meeting, and coach said at the team meeting, uh, this has got to be the first time in history that, or one of the first times in history that a guy comes straight from the G League and starts right away. Mm -hmm. So, um, oh, that hasn't played that hasn't played one NBA minute. So, um, and he got he, he gets to go against Rudy Gobert and uh, Naj Reed. So, uh, uh, right into the fire, the number one team in the West. So, yeah, it was yesterday. So, we all met him. I, I met him yesterday. Obviously, Jordan knew him. Jordan played with him, I think, in, in college. And uh, so, yeah, he thrust right into the fire right away. How much different is that? Like, obviously, we've asked you a couple times about uh, Jemias Ramsey, Kobe Simmons coming in, Javon's coming in and stuff. When it's a big man instead of a, a guard coming in, how different is, is that adjustment um, for you as a leader, but also the team getting used to that guy or that guy picking up the system and stuff? Um. I think the biggest difference is not necessarily a, whether it's a guard or a big. I think it's a whole different team. Um, like, he didn't come from 905, so he doesn't know our coverages and what we call. Um, he and, and the fact that he's so young. So, Jemai has played in Sacramento for, you know, a year or two, and um, Javon has played in the league again before. I think the fact that he didn't come from our system and the fact that this was his first NBA game uh, was probably the biggest difference more so than the big and small. Him being a big, uh, you know, I, I'm able to tell him, you know, you know, things of that that we like to see as bigs. I asked him what his game like, the roll, the pop. He let me know. He was like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not a, I'm not a live guy. Just letting you know that now. Okay. Um, All right. you know, I got, I got some touch, you know what I'm saying? I got floaters and I could shoot a little bit, but you know, just so I need to know what his game is so we can play off, make sure we play off each other the right way. Um, I'm not, if I'm looking for him to be a Moji, then, you know, I got to ask him about that. You know, if, if he's, if he's a guy that can pass it. So it's just a matter of getting to the nuances, especially since he's going to play a lot of minutes, you know, obviously the other guys that come in when they sign these contracts, they may not even play the first game, you know, the second game. Um, and so the other guys, you kind of, Jemias, I was able to play with him in like the conditioning league and play groups mm -hmm. a couple of times early on. So I knew his game. I, I could tell he could shoot. I could tell he was a defender with Malik. The first, first time I played with him was on, on that tip-off. So um, it's just a different dynamic there. Yeah, that's got to be really unique. I, I thought you were going to say, I'm going to offer him tips as a fellow big. Because <laughs> <laughs> you, I was going to say, you spent a decent time guarding uh, Nazareth as well last night, you know? No, I started on him, no, no question. I mean, I was guarding AD. Yeah. I told AD, you know, Bron, Bron I, my wife sent me, a, I guess, a screenshot of Bron saying, telling JJ on his podcast, like, oh, they got Garrett Temple at the five, at X5 right now. Um, and that's just the, that's, that's what, that's the situation we're in right now, man. Yeah. Um, nah, yeah, I definitely spent a lot of time guarding Nas, fellow LSU guy, mm -hmm. love him to death, love how his growth, you know, talk about somebody that was, you know, I kind of counted out. Uh, yeah, after going, like, it was very great coming out of high school. Yeah. LSU, he did, you know, whatever, for whatever reason, he went undrafted, was always very talented. Just glad to see him thriving. Um, but nah, I'm, that, that, that's the situation we're in. And, you know, my thing is, I've always loved challenges. Mm. And I think the, the best teams, every player on the team takes whatever challenge the coach gives them and tries to thrive in that. And, uh, so that's what I try to show to everybody around. Like, I don't care. You want me to guard AD? Great. Yeah. Let me let me guard him. You yeah. want me to guard Ann Edwards? Great. Whoever whoever you need me on, whatever you need us to do, let's go do it to the best of our ability. Well, I mean, this is why 
when people talk about leading by example, like this is this is exactly that. I mean, you know, the team's obviously in a difficult situation, right? We, we, we're talking about like you know, you're you're bringing in Malik. He's goes through walk through and then immediately starts against you know the number one team in the West. You know, um, you are a guard. Let's be honest, right? You played some point guard. You played some shooting guard. Now you're guarding AD. By the way, you did get a chase down block on AD. You know, like a little. I think they call it a steal, but yeah. it, we were cheering from upstairs when we saw that. We were like, yeah, Garrett, do it for the Raptors show. So the thing is, though, I've been talking about that. I, yeah. I stole AD the ball when he when he tried to post me up in the first half. I stole the ball. Yeah. The one that everybody thought was a block, I yeah. got to be honest, I didn't block that. RJ blocked that. Oh. It looks like I blocked it. It did look like you blocked it. Yeah. And I, I saw the film, and it, it looks very much like I blocked it, but... It's just just the way it looked. I feel like RJ got his hand on it. Oh, I know okay. I didn't. Or maybe we just both fouled him, and he just it looked like a block. <laughs> yeah, that's but fine. Yeah. I got to be honest, that wasn't me. I appreciate. I wow. appreciate it though. Wow. Okay. Well, still, you're you're going out there. You're, you're putting my example, but I think the more difficult thing for the younger guys is like, how do you not just like let go of the rope, right? Because I, I do feel like, you know what, we can all see the situation. You guys are playing with eight guys. A lot of these guys are inexperienced. People aren't expecting wins, but when it gets to that point where it's like, all right, it's it's a forty eight point loss. It's a 40-point loss. It's a 30-point loss. A lot of that just comes down to, like, guys letting go of the rope at a certain point and starting to play sloppy. And I thought a lot of that happened last night as well. I don't know. I guess my question is, how do, how do guys not do that? It's just the mentality. Um, it's a mindset. Um, it's a competitiveness um, that, you know, I think you have to have in order to be a really good team. So individually, you have to have it to have a long career, have a good career. And then you have to have enough guys that have that mentality to have a really good team. And then obviously talent, you know, on top of that makes you championship caliber. Um, but I think it's, you know, that's one thing we say, no matter who we have, because you see these teams like Washington, you see these teams like Memphis beating teams. Yeah. Um, so it's not about winning the game, but it's about being competitive. And I think, the last two or three games, we haven't done that, and um, we got to we got to fix it because it's not going to get any easier. Nobody's going to feel sorry for us, so we have to have a, a mindset of exactly what you said: not letting go of the rope at any point, and um, coming out here and competing every single night um, as best we can. Um, okay, so you play against that team last night, and obviously that's a, a really tough loss for you guys. It, it's the biggest one that you've you've had as an NBA player. It's the biggest one the Raptors have had. Um, some of that is also the Wolves are, are really, really good. Um, what do you make of that? I guess also we, we joked, you know, we, we just talked about you guarding Anthony Davis and Nas Reed. You were also guarding Anthony Edwards. <laughs> yeah, uh, so I guess I, I want to start on that. Like how, how, like if we're talking about the, the toughest one-on-one -on -one guys to check in the league right now, like how high up there is Anthony Edwards? Oh, he's very high. He's extremely high up there. Um, obviously, I haven't, the last year and a half, kind of, I haven't been in the practice of guarding guys, mm. just being completely honest, not playing. But I think back to when I was playing a lot and being the guy, like, I'm guarding the guys. Mm -hmm. um, just seeing Ant, the thing about him, he's so athletic. He's so offensively gifted. Um, he can make, he has basically every shot in his bag. And... He's willing to take every shot. Like he's not a guy that that's the one thing that he has he can grow. Just just reading the game and understanding when to take his spots and you know. Uh, but as a one on one guy, he's he, he's gotta be top five for sure. Um, you know, with his physicality, his 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 athletic ability, he probably he's probably, he's probably top three in terms of toughest to guard. Uh and and then he started making threes against us. He was off the last three, four games, and he started hitting them right. against us. So, yeah, he's he's very tough to guard. Very tough to guard. What about this Wolves team as a whole? Um, again, you you mentioned they're they're at the top of the West. The the top of that West is, is crazy. We don't know what the timeline is like exactly for them to get Carl Anthony Towns back. But they're the number one defense in the league, like by far statistically. Um, how far do you think that team can go after seeing them like that? Um. I think the biggest thing is their defense, man. You know, they 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 have so much length on the defensive end. You know, we you know guys were talking about it at halftime. You know, Grady maybe mentioned he's like Jaden McDaniels. I pump faked him and he flew by, and then he still blocked my shot. Like, yeah. what, what? How does that happen? Um, 
and the relentlessness that they play with on defense. Yeah. So, you know, when you have guys that can guard on ball um, and then you can just send them to Rudy, uh, you know, Rudy is a guy that mm-hmm. changes shots, you know, deters shots. Um, I think the the one thing, the one concern about them in the playoffs is just experience. You know, that's why they brought in Mike Conley, and Mike's going to be great for them, calming calming them down. But he's only one guy. Ka Kyle Anderson has great experience, but and Rudy as well. Um, but their their guys, Ant and Cat. This is going to be, you know, when Cat comes back, then being able to mesh all three of those bigs that all three can play and all three have big impacts on the game. I think for them getting cat back as early as they can will, will be, you know, paramount. And uh, they have the ability to match up well with different teams because they can go big and small. Um, it's just going to be the experience. Mm-hmm. And um, them going through the, you know, Ant and Cat honestly going through the growing pains of different playoff situations, matchups, learning how to read the game in the playoffs. If, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if they go, Depends on who they match up against, too. You know, it's yeah, all about true. matchups in the playoffs. Like, you got Phoenix at seven, who's beating everybody by 20 and 30 now, you know? Um, is it going to be the Lakers? Is it going to be Golden State? You know, like, you never know who's going, who they're going to play against. Uh, so, it's going to be very, very interesting, but their defense is their calling card right now, and I think they, they'll they be able to lean on that, and that's that bodes well for them. Yeah, that bodes really well for them. Gary, yeah, you you mentioned the uh, the fact that Minnesota has 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 this like relentlessness on defense, right? They really get after her and you know for a long time. And you've been in the league and you play Minnesota a lot. Like that was not what they're known for. In fact, it was like the opposite. You know what I mean? Like Minnesota was like an unserious team for a long time, or their young team like trying to figure things out. But you would never say they were a defensive like you know like they get after it on defense. I think obviously you you add Rudy Gobert, right? A guy who's won so many Defensive Player of the Years. That's gonna help. You add Jalen McDaniels, uh, or Jaden McDaniels, sorry. We're too used to saying Jalen, his brother. Um, Jaden obviously really gets after a- a- Anthony Edwards. When he really wants to, he's, he really locks in, too. Yeah. So, but is it is it like the players bring that intensity, or is it the coaching with the, with Chris Finch? Like, how do, you, how do you generate that defensive identity and that defensive intensity that you need to to win at a high level? That's a great question, uh, Will. You know, Chris Finch was my first coach in the, in, in the pros. He coached me in the G League oh, word. with the uh, real, real Grand Valley Vipers. It was his first year coaching over here, my first year playing. Love Chris, love Finchie to death. Um, gave me a lot of confidence on the offensive side of the ball. He's an offensive mind. Now, I think Finch understands you have to play defense in order to win games. Win championships, you have to be a top 10 defensive team. Um and but he also has such a great offensive mind so he you know he delves this responsibility defensively to his de- defensive coordinator but a lot of it has to do with your personnel you know they've done a great job bringing in guys that can guard and you know they they've i guess reiterated to him that defense is what is going to help us win you know we have guys that can that can score for us and like you said Jaden obviously um Kyle Anderson is a very underrated defender. Mm. Uh, Rudy, obviously, Mike on the ball is really good. Just understands, and Ant on the ball is a is a beast. Now off the ball, he gets a little, you know, relaxed and lackadaisical and, and loses guys. A lot of a lot of high end guards do that in the NBA. I mean, John Wall was like that when we played in DC. Mm. On the ball, he's a monster, and then off the ball, he just, you know, he'd lose guys because he's kind of uninter- uninterested off the ball. On the ball is competitiveness. Mm-hmm. I'm athletic. I, I I can just lock you up. So that that's a you know one thing that he has to get better at. But I think it has a lot to do with the coach letting guys know what we need to do, but then the personnel that you have actually having the mindset of doing it. And because at the end of the day, it's an old adage: coaches can't go out there and play. You can lead a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So it's about the guys on the court doing the actual. Um, defensive schemes that are out there. Every scheme, any scheme can work if you do it at a high level and you have the, the personnel to do it right. You know, Rudy Gobert is much better in a pick and roll defense, dropping, keeping, you know, stopping the lobs than I would be. He's seven foot two, and you know what I'm saying? So personnel definitely matters. Um, and you just have to have the, the coaches just putting you in a situation to, to utilize the personnel the right way. 
Uh, speaking of personnel being utilized uh, in different ways, I want to go outside the Raptors here, but to uh, someone Raptors relevant, someone you were doing shooting competitions with earlier in this year, uh, Malachi Flynn dropped a 50 piece last night. <laughs> uh, when you check your phone and you see that, first of all, like statistically, it is the least likely 50 point game in NBA history. Nobody has ever had a lower scoring average and dropped 50 uh -huh. uh, than Malachi Flynn. So out of nowhere, he was av even with Detroit, he was only averaging six points a game before this one with the Pistons. Um, how surprised were you? And, and then second to that, how happy for him are you? So um, I found out when I was walking in the locker room and I was, you know, people got to understand, I love Mal like a brother. When he got traded, you know, we were in the room, we, you know, upset together. Uh, love my young fella man like for real he was one of the close he was one of the closest guys i got to on the team before the trade and uh so when i heard it i was you know kind of upset that i heard that because we should be thinking about a 50 point we should be thinking about a 50 point loss um but once the air cleared and we you know calmed down i knew i had to hit him uh you know i, I heard he was 18 for 25 so we get on the plane i text him then i facetime him and I was I mean, ecstatic for him because of what he's going through this season, you know, having a chance to actually show that he can be an NBA player this year and then getting traded to New York and then getting traded to again. Um, and then being in a situation where he was backing up, you know, he's the third string guard on a team that's, you know, has the worst and second worst record in the league uh, being in his fourth year. And I talked to him and he said, bro, I didn't even think I was going to play. You wow. know, Cade was still playing until, you know, and with Cade and Sasser play, then I'm I'm out. I don't play. He's like, Cade was playing until like the, till right before we tip off, he just couldn't go. And I got to play. And I said, tell me about it, man. How I felt. He said, I just, you know, got a couple minutes to fall and some some free throws early on. And it was it was up from there. Off the bench, man, 34 minutes. And yeah. I think he didn't even start the second second half. He came in like the six, seven minute mark and had 33 in the second half, man. And I was, I got to go back and I got to watch it. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I hit him up right away. You know, me, him, me, him, I put me, me, him, and Dennis are in a group chat. We were really close. And uh, I text the group chat and Dennis said, Yeah, man, I hit him right after the game. So <laughs> I FaceTimed him and I was just hyped. I was so excited for him, man. Um, yeah. I, uh, I, it was crazy. I was talking to some guys and, Minnesota, Anthony Tolliver was at the game. I went and uh -huh. talked to him after the game. And we talked about Mal Malachi at 50, and it brought up Corey, Corey Brewer's 50. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, that was like and 20 like, transition that was, layups. That though. was such, yeah, that was so <laughs> unlikely because nobody, Corey Brewer having 50, and then I said, yeah, but Miles is probably more unlikely. And then, like yeah. you said, you read the stat. It's the most unlikely 50 ever. But I'm, I'm so happy for my guy. So happy for him. For sure. Yo, you know, honestly, you're putting it in perspective, but, like, I know you've been around a lot of trades and all that kind of stuff. You've been on multiple teams yourself, but I mean, like the reaction, the fact that, you know, you and Malachi were close. He gets dealt. You and Dennis were close. He gets dealt. OG, I mean, everyone loves OG. Like he's such a lovable guy. Yeah. He gets, he gets traded. Obviously as part of that trade, Precious, Pascal, you know, like, I don't know, man. Like how, how does the locker room recover after all those, like, you know, big departures like that? Well, people that like, Mo you know, had time and investment here in Toronto. This is the most eventful season I've ever been a part of. Yeah. Period. Point blank. Um, I mean, it's hard. It's hard to recover. It's very difficult to recover. Um, you know, you know, you got to think about, you got to think about a guy like Chris Boucher that's been here so long and seen so, so much change in this year. Um, and then gets injured. You know what I'm saying? Um, you think about Scotty, who was with those guys for, you know, his first three years and then so much change this year. It's just, it's not easy. Um, but this is the, this is the one, the, you know, not the middle ground, but one side of the NBA. You know, the NBA, their business, you know, they might have one or two trades. It's on you on this side, one or two trades. And then, you know, you have maybe three or four, you're on this side, but then we're on the, the hot, the other side of it with probably the most trades I've seen on a team since I've been on for sure, the most turnover on a team. So it's the league, it's the business we're in. And, uh, you know, you do this obviously to find some, some type of sustainability in a roster. And, um, uh, that's, that's what it is. 
Um, okay, before we let you go here, Garrett, uh, this weekend it'll be officially announced, but Shams broke the news yesterday. I don't know why we need to break the news on stuff like this early, but your boy Vince is going into the hall. Um, what's that like? Like, is he allowed to talk about it yet? Or it's not official? Like, are you allowed to text him about it and say congrats? Or are you waiting until the official? How's that been? Nah, you know, I told you all about the group chat we had. Yeah. So I text Chauncey first, uh, and then I text... And then I actually, I think uh, Jay Jax um, texted our group chat with me, him and G Hill, and said, uh, the old man going into the hall. Because <laughs> we had texted him when he got nominated, obviously. Yeah. And uh, he was like, man, it's it's unreal. So, I mean, to answer your question, I'm allowed to text him. I don't have nothing <laughs> to do with it. I'm just, if, if it doesn't happen, I'm like, oh, my fault, bro. I'm just going off what, you know. Yeah. yeah. They're never wrong, right? Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's just, he's a static man. And it's just, you know, both of those guys' careers, him and Chauncey, but Vince is, I mean, I think Vince was so underrated as a player. I mean, he was looked upon more as like a superstar because of his dunking ability, but what he did game to game, and you know, in terms of scoring the ball, like was elite, elite. And, uh, you know, it's great to see him get his flowers. Um, I'm excited for him, man. I'm really excited for him, for sure. Yeah. Well, that'll be the first Raptor officially to, to go in the hall, which will be really, really good. And uh, and hopefully he's he's followed soon after by two more, Kyle, <laughs> Damar. I mean, I feel like these guys are all your friends, basically, man. You might be one of the most popular guys in the league. This is what we're <laughs> figuring out off of all these interviews. He's like, yeah, I texted Chauncey. I'm like, what? What's the connection there, you know? But, yeah, <laughs> you know. Chauncey, my first, like, one of my, I think my second start in the NBA. First, no, fourth start in the NBA. Yeah. I was with the Spurs. And I was playing against Chauncey Billups. And Antonio McDice was my, like my, the starting four for us in San Antonio. It's my rookie year. And he came up to me before the game and was like, Chauncey was asking about you because I'm, I'm playing point guard. I'm going against Denver. Chauncey Billups, JR, Nene, Melo. Oh, yeah. That was a talented team. The, 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 the squad, the yeah. squad in Denver. And uh, I'm like, well, what, what do you say? He was like, you just asking me about your game and stuff. So we won the game after the game. Mm -hmm. Chauncey was like, I like the game, young fella. You can be high in this league. Wow. Hey, big shot talking to me, man. Golly. Yeah. So since then, we've been tight. And, uh, yeah, that's that's my guy. That's yeah. my guy. All right. Yeah. Garrett, man, we appreciate you. We could, honestly, we could talk to you, like, for the entire If we show. didn't have a pre-tape to air in the in the next segment, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got to bump you for Eric Corey, man. Blame blame Coach Corey for that one, all right? All right? No problem. No problem, bro. I appreciate you, Garrett. And we'll, we'll, we'll catch up with you again Thanks, next week. Garrett Temple. What's it going to have him do next, man? Guard Giannis? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs>